the common misconceptions or stereotypes. The list could go on for a long time. Hinduism, you can believe anything you want, um, is a stereotype. Could you share one key message that you believe is particularly impactful? One of the most key spiritual points I think I've learned from both traditions is that life is a lifelong journey to experience God. What, according to you, are the common misconceptions or stereotypes of different traditions, of different faiths that you have come across and how you think that education mm. can help us to dialogue better and overcome this? Mm. I think, uh, you know, you, the list could go on for a long time, but, but some of the misconceptions, and misconceptions always have an element of truth. Often people are looking to some examples and making some points. So usually it's not a total fabrication, but generalization about religion. So to say that Christians believe that everyone else is going to hell. Mm -hmm. there, there were missionaries who said things like that, but that is not what Christians believe today. Or to say that Islam is a violent religion. And there certainly have been in traditional times and today, some people who call themselves Muslim who are violent. But to say that Islam is a violent religion is a terrible stereotype, unfair to the 99 plus percentage. Or to say that Hinduism, you can believe anything you want, um, is a stereotype. Because most people have some knowledge of, of Shastra, some knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, and also family gurus, family traditions, and have a, a certain kind of faith. Or to say that uh, this religion has an evil social structure. Or that religion is prone to colonization or dominating other cultures. Historical instances will show us that that's the case. You can look at oppressive structures in the West or in the East and say sometimes people use religion to talk about the justification for oppressing the minorities. Mm. Or that you used your religion for colonial purposes. Things like that can be said. But again, going back and saying, is that really what the religion is about? Is that what Christianity means? Is that the essence of Islam? Is that Hinduism or Buddhism? No. And I think, therefore, we who try to believe in the modern world have to know history, have to know that history is complicated, mm -hmm. and have to be able to say for every bad incident and every evil way, there are many more good incidents, good examples, good ways to think. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people who are unknowing who are ignorant of their own traditions and others will gain the stage and say here is the stereotype we should follow it but if we know our own tradition and have respect for the other we can be people who make a balance we can be people who help show that most of the stereotypes are are not accurate okay yeah definitely and from your extensive writings on spirituality could you share one key message that you believe is particularly impactful for those who are seeking that spiritual growth? Well, I think if you, if you remember, as I'm sure our audience does, that I'm Roman Catholic, working in the Catholic tradition and studying certain forms of Hinduism, one of the most key spiritual points I think I've learned from both traditions is that life is a lifelong journey to experience God. And that we do many things, we have many books, we have many doctrines, theologies, shastras, we have many rituals that we perform, uh, hierarchies, leaders and followers and so on. But the question that always has to come back is, what is all of this for? And if, if our religions are simply for social control or social order or keeping people in their place, that's not worth it. Uh, that is not why religion should exist. But you see this in the biblical tradition, you see this in Catholicism, in modern teachers in the West, and in all the different Hindu traditions, from the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, up to the poetry of Mirabai, Kabir, the saints of Tamil Nadu. Life is a journey to know God better, to love God more. And, and many of these traditions don't just say that, but they say you go through stages in life. You have sadhana. You learn gradually when you're young. When you're middle age, you keep learning. And then when you're older, you have some kind of a sense of being in God's presence. 
And the, the real measure of a tradition is does it help people to find their way to God? And if a tradition seems to be mainly roadblocks or obstacles to trip people up, well, then that needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. So I think we can look inside our own tradition. I can criticize the Catholic Church and say, is this really helping people to be spiritual? And anyone who is Hindu or Muslim or Buddhist or Jain, whatever, Sikh, also to ask, is my tradition as we practice it helping people to find God? And if the answer is yes, then that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But if the answer is maybe not, then how can we fix our traditions to be helpful to seeing God in the world? Because then that affects all of us. If more of us in every tradition see God, then that makes for a better society. Okay. That is indeed a beautiful key message. And how, according to you, individuals maintain their faith while respecting and engaging with the beliefs of others mm. in a world of diversity and complexity of different faiths. Mm. First of all, I think it's absolutely necessary to do what you're suggesting, uh, to be open-minded, to be respectful of other people's traditions, to learn from them, to not think mine is right and theirs is wrong. All of that seems to be 100% necessary in the 21st century. But not everyone realizes that the best way to do that is to be grounded in your own faith and to have deep sense of commitment as a Christian, as a Vaishnava Hindu, a Shaiva Hindu, as a Muslim. Because if you have deep roots in your own faith, you won't get blown away or shrivel up when you meet another faith. So you think of how trees that survive storms have deep roots, uh, plants that don't get shriveled by the sun have deep roots, and so on. Likewise, we need deep roots in our own traditions in order to not be afraid of other people's religious traditions. And many people think this is not true, mm -hmm. that the problem in the world is too much faith or too much belief, and that if people stopped caring about religion, if people became secular and religion was like pushed to the side, we'd all be better off. And I think there, there are good secular people. It's not to say that secular people are evil or that humanists who affirm the human, that is not a bad thing. But for most of us, most of the time, to say, I want to be open-minded, I want to learn into religiously, therefore I have to know my own faith, study my faith, practice my faith, live in community, and then I will be better to be open into, into religiously. I know the uh, one Swami I know, the mm -hmm. Chinajir Swami in Hyderabad, who is a a great proponent of, you might say, of progressive Hinduism. Mm -hmm. He says, practice your own and respect the other. Uh, and that's a beautiful saying. It's very simple. Yes. Practice your own faith. Mm -hmm. And then in light of that, respect the other, be open to the other. But if, if I don't know my own faith, if I'm shallow, if I'm just angry, that will not make it possible to have mutual respect. Would you be giving some other guidelines which the youngsters would take up? Um, the guidelines might be basic wisdom for everyday life. How can spirituality and theology provide solace, purpose and resilience in people's lives? You know, there's a war here, a war there, there's bombing going on. Innocent people are being killed because we need to work together against the forces of chaos and evil that are around us. <laughs>